How's it going everyone? I'm Kyle and in this week's C program tutorial we're learning all about logic operations. Let me start off this video with a question. What is logic? Now if you said it's what your mom says you lack when you spend all of your money on too many Fortnite V-Bucks, technically you're not wrong but logic in in terms of computing is what separates a computer from a mere calculator now both of them can do math pretty well we learned that in last week's video but what a computer can do is logic operations and that is make decisions based off of true and false values and even do operations based off of those they, believe it or not you can actually do math without numbers it's called uh, boolean logic or boolean math that actually brings me to my first point that i want to cover a little bit of vocabulary for you that word i just used boolean might seem like a big scary computing term but i promise you it's not hard to understand at all boolean is named for george bull who is the person who in the at the end of the nineteenth century uh, figured out how computers could do logic so boolean is a synonym synonym for logic and i will probably end up using them interchangeably a lot in this video so in computing a a boolean value or logic value can have either one of two states either true or false and that's more or less all there is to know about logic well not really there's tons of operations that you can do using that true and false logic as a matter of fact you use it to control most of your programs how do you go about doing that well let's learn about that right now I have a blank clean C file open and we can start taking a look at the boolean logic operations that are available to us in C I'm going to be explaining them in the C order of operations, starting from level 6, which is where we see our first Boolean logic operation, and working all the way up to level 14. Now, if you haven't seen my video last week, or if you need a recap, C executes all um, statements, all mathematical or logical operations in a very specific hierarchy, um, starting with what are called the level 1 operations, those are the first to execute, all the way up to the level 14 operations. And it also does that moving from left to right across a statement that's written. Um, and you can see my video from last week for uh, more, more detail on how that works exactly. Um, but now I would just want to dive in to some of these operations. So first I'm just going to define some variables. I'm going to need some numerical values uh, because some of the logic operations do uh, require um, numerical values because they do numerical comparisons and then give you a logical output. Uh, so X and Y are going to be um, say my, my number values. So any given number values. Uh, and I'm also going to make logical values for A and B and those can be either true or false states. So then moving into level 6 which are the first logical operations that we encounter we have simply put uh, x less than y uh, which um, you should all know this one and be familiar with it everyone knows and loves this one this will return true uh, a logical value of true if the numerical value of x is less than the numerical value of y uh, we also have x greater than y um, x less than or equal to y uh, or x uh, greater than or equal to y and those all look like that um, and again the, the, the white space doesn't really matter it just makes it easier to read like this but this is also perfectly functional programming but any of these four will return a value of true if the condition is satisfied so in this if x is less than y here the numerical value is of x is greater than y here x is less than or equal to y or x is greater than or equal to y these are all ones that we're probably pretty familiar with moving on to level seven we have uh... the uh... direct comparison ones so for example uh... x uh... and then with a double equal sign y so this checks to see if the numerical value of x is directly equal to the numerical value of y and if both of them are directly equal this will return a value of true if not it returns a value of false and of course they need to be exactly equal uh, for it to be true uh, next we have the uh, uh, what I think is called the contrapositive I don't know somebody have to, has to check my my logic uh, vocabulary there but we have x with the exclamation point and the equal sign this means not equals y so if x, the val numerical value of x is not equal to y, this returns true. So for example, if x equals 5 and y equals 6 and you run it through this expression, that returns true. 
If both of them equal 6, then it returns false. Coming over to level 8, we have the first of our bitwise operations, again using numerical values. Um, to review, bitwise operations are operations done on the binary numbers of any uh, numerical value that is given to a computer. So recall from earlier in my series when I talked about binary math, um, you imagine a decimal number instead of just being like two decimal, two or three, or however many decimal digits, it's a whole bunch of uh, bits or zeros and ones. And this is going to do operations directly on those bits. So the first one we have there is x ampersand y. And what this does is uh, this is the bitwise operator and. So it's going to compare the memory bits of x to the memory bits of y. And it outputs a binary number, so that's uh, a string, uh, I, I shouldn't use the word string, but a series of, of ones and zeros with the length of whichever one of them is larger. It's going to put a 1 as the value of the bit uh, where both of the bits are 1 in uh, both of these and then um, it's going to put a 0 everywhere else so for example if I'm I'm just going to give you uh, a half of a byte here so if x is 0 1 1 0 and y is uh, 0 1 0 1 what this will do is it'll give us a uh, a number back in the length of the larger of the two so they're both the same so it's going to be 4 and it's going to put a 1 in every bit that both of them have in common so the output would be 0 1 0 0 because both of them have a 1 in this bit uh, but um, not these two uh, don't satisfy the AND operation so uh, that's pretty much what, what um, that logical operation looks like that's the bitwise logical operator AND. In level 9 we have the bitwise operator for exclusive or, which is denoted by the exponent caret, so x um, uh, caret y, and this is uh, very similar to the way this works, is that it's going to compare the memory of uh, both of them, right? So, for example, uh, I'll use the same example numbers again, so it compares the bits of both of them, but in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to um, return a one for each bit that um, x either x or y has but not both of them so what the output of this would look like if run through an exclusive or uh, since uh, both of these are zero that's just going to be zero since both of these are one that will also be zero but since only x has the one that returns a one and since only y has the one that returns a one exclusive or um, means that like for every state that both have a 1 or a 0, it's going to insert a 0 into that bit. And in every bit where either x or y has a 1, but not both of them, then it inserts a 1. And that is the exclusive or operator. Level 10 gives us just the, the regular, more conventional or operator. And that's denoted by x with the vertical line of y. This vertical line, by the way, on a US keyboard is found underneath the backspace and you use the the shift key to access it so what the or operator does is again another bitwise operation uh, compares the memory of both x and y um, so I, I know I like using this example so where either x or y has a 1 it's going to insert a 1 so the output of this if both have 0 it'll be 0 uh, if both have 1 it's 1 and if either of them has 1 it's also 1 so that would be the output uh, when run through this non-exclusive or bitwise operation. Level 11 gets uh, back into our classic uh, Boolean operations and this is no longer using numerical values so I'm going to switch over to my A's and B's so A and then with the double ampersand B and what this is, this is the AND logic operator so both A and B can be either true or false and this expression will only return true if both A and B are true. Um, and if one of them is false, so for example, if A, if A is true and B is false, it returns false. If A is false and B is true, it returns false. If both are false, uh, they'll, it'll return false. Uh, and then level 12 is where we get the Boolean OR operator, and that is denoted by two of these vertical lines, like so, and it looks like that. Uh, and this returns true if either A or B or both of them happen to be true. So if A is true uh, and B is false, that returns true. 
If A is false and B is true, that returns true. If both are true, it returns true. And, but only if both are false does it return false. Moving on to level 13, this is what's called our ternary operator, uh, which is a little bit complicated, and that's why I'm saving it for a later tutorial. So I'm actually not going to, I'm going to skip over that one for now. And then we'll go on to level 14, uh, which is the last operation to execute. And these again are iterated um, uh, operations, which we saw before with the math ones. They also have uh, logical counterparts. So A with the AND equals B, and then we also have A with the OR equals B. Um, there's, there it is. And that's what those would look like. Those are all of the logical operations that are available to us in C. Here's a quick example of what uh, some of these logic operations might look like in the context of a real program. This is some code that I wrote for a project on GPS navigation. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the arguments of these if statements. So within the argument of this if statement, we actually have uh, three different logical operations. Uh, so the first one we're looking at uh, to see if the input, lat, uh, the input latitude is greater than or equal to zero. And that could either return true or false depending on the value of the input latitude. We're also looking to see if the value of the input latitude is less than or equal to 999. And that could also uh, return true or false. Then when both of these have their either true or false value, they're compared to each other using the two ampersands, which is the AND operator. So this if statement will only execute its, uh, uh, will only execute if both the input latitude is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 999. And that's how these nested logic operations work in the context of the program that I wrote. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.